Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Brian and Eric Don't Belong Here. It's just Brian here, doing a quick drop-in to let you know that Eric and I are taking the rest of the summer off from recording, and we'll be back around mid-September, and I think we have some fun ideas for some exciting directions to take the show. In the meantime, I'm having a lot of fun looking back at some of our old episodes from our original run of the podcast. Uh, back and I, back when Eric and I were huddled in a conference room at our old job with this blue Yeti microphone between us. Uh, the sound is a little beneath our standards now, but I think there's still a lot of good stuff here, and I hope you do too. That said, feel free to let us know what you think on Twitter at Brian and Eric Pod or leave us a review on our Apple Podcast page. As always, all we're asking for is a working man's three stars, baby. Uh, this episode, which we originally recorded in 2018, is all about pop culture conspiracy theories. I hope you like it, and I'll see you next week. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to Brian and Eric Don't Belong Here. I am here, as always, with my friend and colleague, Eric Brenner. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, we were off last week. We were off. It's, uh, it was tough getting back into the uh, into the archives down here after a week off. I know. I couldn't find the keys. I think they bumped uh, up security a little, but it's yeah, okay. We we're here. Do, we made it. Had to do some cat burglar biz. <laughs> I crawled across the top of a stack. <laughs> uh, Brian and Eric don't belong here. It's a show about uh, ghosts and goblins and monsters and other shadowy uh, things of that nature. Speaking of that, like we've always kind of focused on that part real hard the hauntings and the ghosts um but initially when we were talking about it it wasn't it's never it was never supposed to be all that we wanted to talk about like also bigfoot and uh conspiracies uh we were really hoping to delve into all natures of things we do not have a good enough understanding of to talk about for an hour on a this is true yeah and these are good because these involve real world things (laughs) Right, so, so that we have even less understanding of the yeah, We can be even actually objectively wrong uh, <laughs> instead of just incompletely summarizing people's beliefs about a thing <laughs> that don't necessarily exist in this world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this week, I really want, I, I got excited by, I was kind of, God, it, the same panic rush we have every Thursday of like, oh, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about some pop culture conspiracies, some things that have permeated uh, kind of the zeitgeist of the shit we like. Whenever famous things are involved and a lot of there's a thing that a lot of people are interested in, some weird shit's going to come up. I'm so excited for this. (laughs) Do you? I have three that I want to talk about tonight. Um do you have any though that like come up off the top of your head? Of uh, I have two, I have two really really common ones. The ones that everyone talks about when they first come up, and I have one that's a little more. The people who know it are going to be like, yeah, of course, but it's a little more uh, in I mean, the weeds. I, I think it's quite obvious at this point that Patrick Russell and uh, or Patrick Swayze and Kurt Russell are the same person. <laughs> I will. I has will anyone that. has anyone seen them in the same room? Never, not Never. one time, not one fucking They're time. The same two sides of the same coin. <laughs> there was a struggling actor, and an agent said, "Look, you're kind of a mix. There's got to be a good bo- a good guy and a bad boy." I like the idea of an agent going. Uh, we're having some trouble right now with finding roles for you. So there let's needs double to be up. Two of you. <laughs> you need to pick two niches. <laughs> I think we just wrote the script of a of a new buddy comedy. I, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, Are we about to get spooky? <laughs> I was, you know, I'm trying to throw the spooky music up, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not working like it's supposed. To. <laughs> Even more spooky. I'd like the listeners to know, and maybe you should know this too. Whenever the spooky music does come on, I feel spooked. 
I get a little scared. Uh, yeah, it does. It does help set the mood. Yes, uh, we are speaking of having uh, technical fucking issues because, of course, we do. Um, uh, we are live right now, which explains all of the terrible fucking nightmare. <laughs> Yeah. problems we have all of the time uh we have a chat room here on mixler uh hop in the chat hang on hang out hang out hop in there and if you have any pop chat culture conspiracies that you think are fun and interesting tell us about them and uh we would love to talk about things we have even i did bare minimum prep for yeah. today i yeah. would love to talk about things with a level of authority despite having even less knowledge especially if you are um uh, a government employee. I know we have a lot of those in our in our um, field of listeners and fans. And you're actively participating in a conspiracy you can talk about on the air. Give us a shout. Yeah, I, I, let I, us know. <laughs> we'll keep you pretty anonymous, not super. <laughs> so we'll only accidentally say your full name out yes. loud several times. Yes. Yeah. We'll we'll start doing the first name last initial, and then we'll switch to the first initial last <laughs> right. name. But that'll be late. We'll switch it up, so it won't be too obvious. How good do you think you would be at, like, participating in a conspiracy? I think either excellent or terrible. Like, I think I might be good, even as, like, an undercover cop kind of thing, because <laughs> nobody would <laughs> suspect it. It's too, I'm too bumbling, too fresh-faced, too, like, I just think people wouldn't ever believe that right. I could be, like, right. if I was the top-level villain of a multinational global conspiracy. Nobody would see that. I coming. mean, that would be a surprise. Yeah, it would be. Nobody would. Yeah, exactly. So maybe great, but I would probably spill the beans. Why? What about you? Uh, I feel like your Catholic guilt might get in the way. I also love telling people secrets, man. Yeah, you, it's there's nothing better, really. It's, like honestly, there's there's nothing more just like and it's it's one of my worst traits uh, and i never do it maliciously but it's just like all what have you told what's the worst secret you've told that you can tell i mean nothing crazy but okay. like any it's all like exciting stuff of like okay of uh, i just got engaged and goddamn anyone i could fucking tell would be like oh yeah no i'm doing this <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's a weird little like i also am an anxious person mm -hmm. so like pressure builds up yeah uh, yeah, especially for like exciting things got and I got yeah out. exactly um but like I've worked on TV shows before and like I've just gabbed <laughs> just yeah. here's oh, about, like what's, co yeah. what's coming up yeah <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm excited about it <laughs> sure sure people here's the thing I've gotten better about it you know but like there was a time in my life where it was just like you told me something three other people were gonna hear about it within the hour yeah. unpopular opinion secrets are meant to be told. Yeah, they make people like me when I tell them to people. That's it. There you, you found the found the way. <laughs> so that's where a lot of like I think conspiracies have some trouble. Of you're kidding me? None of this got out. Yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Patriot Act on YouTube. You broke this. <laughs> hey, don't don't discredit our citizen journalists. On the, I would never. I would the, never on the interwebs, dude. Actually. And this was not planned. This is not something we agreed upon ahead of time. Sure, good. <laughs> let's let's break a conspiracy. Yeah, let's find let's a conspiracy dive. and let's be. I mean, that would fit perfectly into the theme of Brian and Eric not belonging here. Just like face down in a in a in an outer burrow gutter with just two <laughs> in the back of our head because we like we like got too close to some. <laughs> We're going to find a conspiracy, thing. and that's going to be our conspiracy. Yeah. So, like, when it's all blown wide open, we'll be the ones that are like, oh, this podcast that nobody listens to. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if we have, if we ever just go off the air, the 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 listeners currently listening, I'm not going to say the number because I don't want to intimidate any of our uh, <laughs> pod podcasting, podcasting competitors out there. But uh, we're coming for you, Alex Jones. But, uh, no. No. If we ever go off the air suddenly, just know that something is wrong. It's it's not We've because, hey, close. this never went anywhere and we lost interest. Yeah, yeah, or... no, no, no. We got too close to something. <laughs> I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> um, so, getting into it a little bit. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't want... I, I also have trouble sometimes with a lot of conspiracy theories are, especially in this day and age, like, fucking dark, man. Yeah, like, really dark. Or just like 
fucking insensitive. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't want to make too many ha-has about some, like, yeah. really gross shit. Yes. Uh some school shootings being faked or that shit that is crazy just unacceptable yeah um pardon me i just burped um so i kind of want to steer clear of some of that stuff and i wanted to look into more fun kooky conspiracies that who knows so uh i found some pop culture ones um anything else you want to go over do you mind if i get into it no, I'd say jump in, man. So, uh, how familiar are how? This is a extremely popular one. Uh, people know this one. Okay. Uh, how familiar are you with the idea that a Stanley Kubrick faked the moon landing, and that he felt guilty enough about it to hide clues about it in The Shining? I'm familiar about it. Uh, I'm familiar with it. I guess is the word I'm looking for there. Uh, from that from that documentary on The Shining. Uh, Room 237, I yeah, believe is the title. kind of go, where they go into that. Yeah. A little bit. And it's a, like, what a great, first of all, do you, what's your take on the moon landing? I assume it's real. I feel like it's real. Yeah. I don't I, think it's fake. No. There are some compelling. It's, there's some weird shit. There's some weird shit. My favorite is how What's-His-Face punched the, uh, the, moon, the moon landing skeptic in yeah. the face. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Armstrong. Um, it is a. Uh, it's uh, admittedly I'm not as well versed in it as, yeah. but like there's some of like I don't I. It is one you could probably convince me of. There's some weird details with it. I mean, I think we went to the moon. I'm gonna say we went to the moon. Yeah. I'm gonna take a hard I, stance to say we yeah. were on the moon. Yeah. We you can you can moon. quote me on that. Yeah, we went we, to the I'm moon. Gonna, it's a bold, brave choice. We put a man on the moon. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Wow, we just lost a listener. We're, <laughs> we're a very polarizing show. Uh, we're not for everyone, Eric. No, we're not. We're not clearly not. Uh, the flag thing is kind of crazy. The, yeah, how does what's the what's the deal with that? I was hoping you wouldn't call my bluff. Uh, it's it, it's it, something to the effect of either uh, there it, it's blowing and there's no wind in space, or it's like totally still and it should be moving. It's one of those. Right. I believe it is the, it's to, or, yeah, it's something about it waving. Here's the thing. If Kubrick did help fake, here's, here's why this theory makes sense to me. If the moon landing was fake, don't think it was, if it was, he'd be a great guy to get. It's true. Because he's a brilliant, right. brilliant, very smart director. And you know that if he did that, they probably paid him a lot of money. And we're also like, if you ever tell anybody, we'll kill you and your entire family. Right. You don't, you don't fucking fake the moon landing, and not get some shady government threats. Yeah. Yeah. To kill everybody, everybody you love dead, gone. Right. They're all gonna right. crack. I'm just saying, crash. Stanley Kubrick alive now? Don't think so. Not alive. Not alive. Not alive. Not alive. Not alive. Did he die right after The Shining was made? No. Okay. So many, many years. I'll back that. That'll be too obvious. I think. Hey, there you go. Yeah. It's a slow acting government poison. But I will say, if you're a guy like Stanley Kubrick who loves little details and puzzles and is a just a, a, a brilliant genius and you get sucked in to this chess game with the most powerful government on earth... You're going to want to find a way. Yeah. I, he's not just going to be like, all right, cool. I'm going to take the money in these threats and that's it. Right. Right. He's going to want to find a way to, to let something out. Let right. some secrets out. Right. So, yeah, the theory goes uh, that the year before the moon landing, uh, Stanley Kubrick made 2001 A Space Odyssey, which made the government realize, oh, shit, there's our guy. Oh, of course. Right. Uh, so Stanley Kubrick made a or helped them televise a fake moon landing and then felt bad about it and began to seed clues in The Shining. Uh, this is from ScreenPrism.com uh, and is one of the uh, more damning elements that kind of kicks this off. I'm reading directly from the website right now. Danny is playing uh, with toys in the hallway. He wears an Apollo 11 sweater. After a red ball mysteriously rolls toward him, he rises. The hexagonal pattern, symbolic of NASA's launching pads on the carpet, changes direction, not because of a continuity error, as theory suggests the infallible Kubrick was impervious to, 
but to symbolize Danny being trapped by what is about to come. He rises, his sw- the rocket on his sweater essentially launching, uh, and he enters room 237. The room is 217 in the book, but theorists claim that Kubrick changed it to 237 to represent 237,000 miles between Earth and the moon. Is that the exact number of miles between the Uh, NASA says the distance is much more than that. (laughs) Fair enough. Wait, yeah, I was going to say, that sounds low. I feel like 237 miles is like... It's like, maybe... like... Chicago. Maybe don't uh, hinge your conspiracy on something you could easily Google. Yeah, yeah. Make it more vague. Alexa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna look. Up, I'm gonna look up distance Earth to the moon. Unless NASA's fucking in on it, dog. True. Uh, yeah. Who's providing the number? Yeah. You, you want to go measure it? Who's giving us the number? That's a great, <laughs> Brian. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Uh. So uh, here are some other uh, little points. Yeah. That I'm with. I'm just. Go- I'm googling Earth to Moon distance. Yeah, hell yeah. Keep going. Uh, okay, the presence of Tang in the film. Oh wait. Oh, whoa. Eric is making. Eric is looking at his phone. And is like holding up his hand. And like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, a little less exciting. Two hundred thirty-eight thousand nine hundred miles, but two hundred thirty-eight, not two three seven. Interesting. But it's not like like it's not that far off. You yeah. know? Yeah. That's interesting, all. interesting. And yeah. that was pre-Google for Kubrick. He could have gotten that wrong. He could have gotten that wrong. Yeah, maybe. Or he needed to put it off just enough. Maybe the measurement changed a little bit. Maybe maybe we got farther from the moon. Yeah, maybe we got further from the moon in that time. Who's, who's going to tell us? NASA? Yeah, we can't NASA's trust not gonna, can't NASA's trust not going to. You heard it here. I'm Brian and Eric. Don't belong here. NASA, shady organization. Don't trust them. At least they're measurements. At least they're moon <laughs> measurements. I think that much we can call into question. Is that the conspiracy we're going to unravel? Yeah, their, their moon measurements are Just a little that. off. There's like some guy at NASA right now who like knows he fucked up and he's like, God damn it. Yeah. All these years. <laughs> um, okay, some other key points. There's the presence of Tang in the film. They drink Tang, that orange juice mm-hmm. thing. Uh, sometimes it's it's... That's given to astronauts, I guess, according to... Yeah, my only thing with that is, like... Tang was also very popular. I was going to say, it's like, they're drinking (laughs) Coca-Cola, which an astronaut also had, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, so let's rank these uh, one to ten it's in like, like in terms of how persuasive. Yeah. Okay. So ten is just like, oh, god damn it. They faked the moon landing. Uh-huh. One is, oh, god dang it. This is bullshit yeah, yeah. made up by a crazy person. Yes. Uh, so I would put that at a, a, a solid three. What, the Tang thing? Yeah. Tang uh, Tang does nothing. For you me. want to throw it completely out. I think it's not a... Th- yeah, it's a, okay. it's a very common food of We've that We've taken era. a real role reversal here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The Room 237 key tag, which reads Room num- Number, N-O, uh-huh. 237, yeah. can also spell Moon Room. Uh, if you take room and no, uh-huh. rearrange them. Moon room. Oh, it's like an anime. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I thought the, I thought the numbers 237 were going to do something. Right. No, no, no. The numbers are not involved. Uh, that's an interesting one, but also what the fuck is a moon room? <laughs> and also, yeah, I guess it kind of, yeah, I mean, like you have extra letters. Do you have extra letters? Yeah, because you get like moon, like row, you know. Oh yeah, got, okay, okay, okay. So it can spell moon room if you like, really if want you, it like, to. Delete letters and <laughs> rearrange other letters. If uh, you're really desperately trying to see that, sure. Yeah, that could be real. I mean, yeah, moon is in the. You can rearrange the number, the letters to spell moon. Okay, okay, so let's drop the room out. Yeah, yeah. Cause well, let me ask you this. Is that a weird thing for a hotel key? Would it Would it usually just have the number? That's a good it? question. Right? I don't Is know. that an odd detail? Every, ho- every hotel I've ever been to has used uh, key cards because we live in uh, the year of our Lord 2018. That's true. <laughs> so. Fair. I'd like to bring back room keys. I think we should. Fun little should. Just good, jangle easily jangle. losable things. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Um, okay. 
Uh, this this one helps better with uh, a visualization, which we cannot provide in an audio format. But look it up yourself. Uh, so when Jack is throwing a tennis ball against the wall, a Native American motif on the wall looks like rockets taking off. And that is true. It's mm-hmm. like looking at it. No, like, no, those, if you squint, yeah, that is weird. it does look I like do rockets. I remember seeing that and thinking that's weird. Uh, coincidence or where, where, how, where would you rank that one to 10? Here's my larger thing with all of these. How would an, uh, a random person, so say the scenario is Kubrick gets sucked in by the CIA or NASA or whoever to help them fake the moon landing. Right. A standard person doesn't know about this. How would any of these details help them make the connection? That's a great point. Between, like, even if you're like, wow, there's a lot of rocket and moon imagery in these scenes. Right, with no context. Doesn't why would really your do exact much. next leap be like, Stanley Kubrick must have filmed and faked right. the moon landing? Right. It's, uh, unless, unless it wasn't for anybody to decode. It, it was, was just, just his little way, his little yeah. fuck you to the, yeah. to the guys who had him in the I See, hole. that's new. That's new. I've always seen it phrased as like, he felt bad. But like, I like a fuck you. I'll, I'll find a way to tell people. Yeah, like, I'm going to tell the secret. You're you not can't the boss control of me. me. Like, he's so brilliant that he doesn't want to be controlled. Right. Right, right. Which then goes to uh, uh, mentioning before Danny being in the hexagon and being kind of trapped. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, is he da- is he Danny? He might be Danny. Is he Danny? Well, wow. interesting. That's kind of crazy. So here's my question that I don't know. I don't know if you know. I wonder how prevalent, like, after the moon, like, how soon after the footage of men landing on the moon was aired on TV and everything, did people start questioning it and be like, is that real? That's a great question. I don't know. You know? Because I will say this. If it was close enough after, then it might, if it was in the air... And then you inject this stuff into the shining. People were already like there was already rumors that Kubrick had been the guy. Right. Right. It's I will say, and I, I don't know this. I do not know the history of, you know, the moon landing conspiracy. But looking at now, yeah. I mean something happens. A tragedy happens. People are on the internet moments later going, This is fake. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Fake. 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 <laughs> I love I want a conspiracy bunker so bad. I love the whole I love the whole attitude of the whole thing. That like you're smarter than everybody. Everybody else is an idiot except for a select group of like evil masterminds who you're like neck and neck. I'm on them. Yeah. I'm on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's it takes a certain kind of brain. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I've seen it in action. I have some family members who uh, fall into this stuff real hard, it's real easy, especially when they are uh, politically inclined. Well, that's, I'll say this. I'll, this is what's so interesting about our time now is I feel like it is, I think this is novel that conspiracy theories have now become like a mainstream part of political discourse absolutely it's you know insane it's really wild and it's you can kind of see how the gears move of like a confirmation bias type of thing yeah i remember my aunt around the time of the election posting uh that uh, though they found newsweek uh uh, covers already like with hillary clinton won the election how could how how could they have that and she, was, she posted the InfoWars article on yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. of like boxes and boxes of Newsweek articles with or, or Newsweek magazines with Hillary Clinton on the cover. Hillary wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's a giant conspiracy. Yeah. Or they print both, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. They <laughs> like do both. you're telling me they wait for the results to come in, often very late at night. Write the articles, do the graphic design, do the printing, and get them delivered to all the stores. I feel like that's a that's so it, I, I, that's so crazy. That's a that's an actual conspiracy because I feel like that's a fairly well known. It, 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 that's it just how be. they do it. Yeah, yeah. And then so I'm, I'm explaining this to my aunt. 
in a Facebook comment very uh, sassily of just like, no, that's not how this works. Yeah, they, yeah. they print both. And then she responds, they didn't print Trump's. Now, did they not print Trump's? Or was that just not in the article that you read? Yeah, right. <laughs> did you not right, see right, a picture right, right. of yeah. them? Pretty sure they did. I pretty, think they I, probably they did. Probably, they probably did. But like the way the gears kind of turn, it's just sort of a confirmation. Like, And also, what is if you actually play that one out? That one's particularly delicious. Because if you play it out, like, what is it? Like, is Newsweek? So you're, yeah, you're telling me. the election. Or that the election is already rigged. It's uh, yeah, I believe there was a I thing think of that's like the angle, right? Yeah, the election, the election is are, rigged. There already is rigged, and also Newsweek is involved. So. Yeah, you gotta get Newsweek, a paragon, one of the pillars <laughs> of American journalism. They've got to be in on it for sure. It's incredible, like so many, and that's where once again secrets are so fun to tell. Yeah, no leaks. Yeah, zero leaks. I mean that is that is the one thing that that does bum me out of in our current age is like. And this is a podcast about the occult and things like that. That is one of the things, uh, with the exception of the very spooky ghost recording from Astonishing Legends. Uh, but like, <laughs> yeah. you would think if more of this stuff was real, you'd see it. Ever like everybody has a, a production, a full camera team in their pocket. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? it's... Every single person should be recording all of these crazy things that should be happening right, all the time. Right, right. And, like, it's so much more mysterious when you can't identify everything or when you don't have all the facts. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. like, man, it makes doing an occulty conspiracy podcast tough. <laughs> We're going to find it. 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 Uh, okay, I'm going to do I'm gonna do one more uh, Stanley Kubrick thing, and then I think we should probably move on. Yeah. Because uh, I got more I want to talk about. Um, let's see here. Uh, here is a good one. The cars visible in the parking lot during an aerial shot of the hotel are arranged in groups of 7, 21, 6, and 9. Okay. Or July 21, 21st, 1969. See, that I'm going to give, I'll give that a 10. That's a 10 That's, out that's of 10. a weird one. That lines up. Yeah. Yeah. That one's, that one's kind of fucking weird. Eric's looking at, uh my sheet right now i just want to reread that the cars visible in the parking lot during an aerial shot of the hotel are range range of 7 21 6 and 9 yeah that that's, one's a little weird that is crazy and it is true i mean he was such a deliberate every detail was intentional i mean i also think that obviously he was a very deliberate intentional person sometimes i think we we stick a little bit up stanley kubrick's butt you think so? I think a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think sometimes, like, I don't know, maybe the cars just are arranged that way. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In which case, it's clearly a synchronicity that's meant right. to expose. There you go. What there you go. Yeah. It was uh, unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing I love, this movie is great because the whole movie is in a way about conspiracy theories. It's an unsettling, strange movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's uh, that's Stanley Kubrick, The Shining, and The Moon Landing. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's so let's take the conspiracy as a whole. Okay. Uh, one to ten. Where would you rank it on? Probably to probably not. I would go. I would. I would say it's a it's a two out of ten. Uh, it's a big stretch. So to sum it to sum it up, the entire conspiracy, the theory itself is that. The moon landing was faked. It was basically done in a in a on a soundstage somewhere. Yes, basically. Yes. Uh, they Stanley Kubrick was the guy who executed it, who planned and executed it. Uh, and the the Shining was his way, either a confession or a fuck you or just a way of revealing. probably not entirely, but like it was definitely on his mind while he was making the Shining. Mm-hmm. I'll say a couple. So, the thing I like about it so much is that it ties into the whole, like, kind of U.S. government Illuminati illusion. Like, manipulating reality through illusion, especially right. via Hollywood. Right. And controlling the masses via mass media. Right. And taking a Hollywood director to create 
an illusion to help win a cold war against another superpower is just a brilliant. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love yeah. that as an idea. I don't know. Did it actually happen? Like, I'll say this. If they're going to do it, they would need a direct. Like, right. You'd need somebody. You'd need a guy who is real good. Yeah. The 2001 Space Odyssey thing is a great yeah. connection. So yeah. Stanley Kubrick would definitely be a candidate. Sure. Absolutely. Uh... I don't know. I just think, and this is kind of cheating, but I think too, I'd, something would have come out. Right. We'd I'd, get something more. You know, like, yeah. he, like he would have released something or. Some scientists would his, go, this doesn't work. This doesn't make sense. Oh, true. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or another country would have been like, you guys never landed on the moon. Right. You right. Know, there's plenty of people who would love it if we never landed on the moon. That's incredibly true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm yeah I'm with it. I'll give it like a two two or three out of ten. The evidence though, all together, some of them are weak. The tank thing is weak. All together, pretty compelling. It's it's an interesting story. I'll give it that. I'll, I'll definitely give it that. Uh, I do want to move on though. Okay, sure. Um, so I was gonna talk about uh one of the more famous ones, which is that Paul McCartney uh is dead and was replaced by a uh. Uh, look alike. Okay. In 1966. Okay. But that's a real famous one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I'm kind of gonna move past it. I I would say that one's uh, definitely a real big stretch yeah. overall. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk. It's I think there's a more interesting version of that existing right now. There's okay. a lot of celebrity died and were replaced uh, that don't quite. It's why would you do that? Right. Ultimately, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah. Let me talk about this one. Are you familiar with uh? rock musician Andrew W.K. I am. Okay. There is a prevailing conspiracy theory that Andrew W.K. does not exist. He is a persona created by, with the help of, David Grohl, and has been played oh, by shit. two actors over the course of his career. <laughs> At least two different actors. And man, just throwing out there, the evidence is compelling. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this. Yeah. Yeah, give me your initial thoughts of yeah, that. <laughs> my my initial thoughts is 100% true. <laughs> okay, so get this. It's 2000. It's yeah. the year 2000, 2001-ish. Okay. Uh, MTV's TRL is the, uh, just, uh, it's the church of pop music. Yes. Uh, and, uh... Alex is in the chat room right now saying, I met Ender WK. I have also met Ender WK, and he's very nice. He's yeah. lovely. Wait, have you met Ender I have WK? met Ender WK, and he's lovely. Where'd you meet Ender? Uh, he did, he did Gethard Joe. No? Okay, okay. Uh, it's not much of an anecdote. He yeah, yeah. did Gethard Joe. He was very nice. <laughs> was he a real guy? Was What's he a real man? He was a real man. But is that... Is that is that man many men? Is it a team? Well, yeah. Uh, so, all right. This is like the Patrick Swayze, Kurt Russell thing. Kind of. Well, it's so there's a specific. So the idea is that it's a persona. There was a guy who was Andrew WK. He was replaced in 2005 with so a new So it's like a actor. professional wrestler. Exactly. Oh, it's like the Undertaker is like many people. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So get this. You know what? I'm going to say, by the way, brilliant idea. I'm just going to put this one out into the universe for free. You create a record label with performers. That are actually characters, a la the WW, WWE now, that are these like timeless archetypes, like Andrew WK, who is just like the god of partying. Right, and right. Debauchery. Right. And it doesn't matter who's playing them, anybody could be making the music. Right. And so you just cycle people in. Yeah. So they're everywhere. Yeah. So these people are, are like, uh, inf they never die. That's it. They're immortal. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Okay, so get this. It's like I said, it's the year 2000, 2001. TRL is a uh, uh, Total Request Live. Do you remember TRL? Yeah, yeah, of course. I never watched it religiously, but like it was, it was on fine. sometimes. It yeah. was fine. Uh, the charts are currently largely occupied with your Britney Spears, mm -hmm. your NSYNC, Classic. your traditional it's, it's pop whole, music. Whole this guy, Andrew WK from Michigan, I believe. Uh, a, a, I, I saw him described as a sweaty, gritty pop, pop or a, a metal caveman. 
Sure. <laughs> Party caveman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I almost said pop punk, which is not correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what genre? Like, what is... I would put that in, like, the... Uh, you know, metal doesn't seem it's right. Not but, I don't think yeah. it's metal. Uh, it, it was kind of in, like, that new metal-y... I guess. Um, just, like, generic rock, if you will. But it's, like, rock, a little, like, if you will, Hard rock. It does have those, like... And and he uh, apparently has some like classical training or like an interest in it at least. Yeah. Who who which one? Who which one is a great question. Uh, okay, so Andrew WK uh, comes onto the scene in this time. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, yeah, he says the song "Party Hard," huge hit. He's on TRL all the time. He uh, he like took over. MTV (laughs) in that period. Uh, He's got, uh, he's opening for the Foo Fighters. He's off the scene out of nowhere as a just dirty metal caveman with a super polished record. (laughs) And like all the advertising, boom, they're ready for it. He's just plugged in and exciting everybody right away. Almost like a marketing machine created him ready to fucking right. go. Right, 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 right. Um, was there any explanation given to that? Is there any, like, counter-conspiracy explanation? Like, oh, he's just a rising star and everybody realized it, so he just got a great deal. I mean, yeah, that, that is kind of like, yeah, David Grohl took, int- Dave Grohl took, uh, of the Foo Fighters, like, took an interest in him and, like, kind of, like... Because there definitely was that thing of kind of, like, manufacturing right, stars. Right, right. At like, that time, especially, like it's not like Britney Spears was like playing small clubs and <laughs> right. like down south, and then she got. It's like no, they made her right, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, so uh, around the time, so huge fucking star, uh, comparatively. Yeah. Uh, I get wet. Big hit album. Great album. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, getting ready for the second album. The rumor is. That maybe this performer, being Andrew WK, who may be the original Andrew WK, that may in fact be his real name. Yeah. Uh, the conspiracy being that Dave Grohl, possibly his father, uh, and other shadowy, recordy types created this persona, this brand of Andrew WK together. Yeah. Um, that maybe went to this Andrew WK's head and wanted a little more input into the music of the second album, The Wolf. Is he sleeping with the fishes? Uh, no, nobody thinks he's sleeping with the fishes. Everyone thinks he maybe retired back to Michigan. Okay. But this shadowy people who have possibly come together as Steve Mike. Steve Mike. This name is important because it's going to come up later. I'm writing it down. <laughs> I'm writing it down on my pad. Steve Mike is an executive producer on I Get Wet, his okay. the first album. First of all, no one with two first names like that should be Steve Mike. It's we be, it's it is believed that the collaborative effort chose the name Steve Mike. It's possible Steve Mike is a group, not gotcha. it a It sounds person. like a group. It sounds like two guys named Steve and Mike. Right. If I had to guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, okay. Uh the wolf is so they think maybe this Andrew WK wanted a little more input on the album, wanted to have a little more control you over see where the I was music. Going with the murder thing, right? Yeah. Like he got a little yeah. too uppity, but the act yeah. was too good to stop, so they had to kill him and then replace him. Right. I don't think that's what went down, but. Yeah, sure. But. <laughs> I'll, I'll dial it back. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew WK is dead, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the Wolf is a radically different album hmm. than uh, I Get Wet. He sounds completely fucking different. Yeah. I mean, like, and I, that's actually, if you listen to I Get Wet, I and do any that. subsequent Andrew W.K. album, it does not sound like the same man. <laughs> Just like the vocals, like the... Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Can we back up and explain yes. again why? So, guy comes on comes onto the scene out of nowhere plugged into every major platform there's a marketing sh- machine already built around him he's yeah. firing on all cylinders top of the charts out of nowhere yeah with i get wet yeah why do they need to replace him for the wolf 
So they think that maybe he wanted either he was tired of it or okay. he wanted or okay. he got problematic. He wasn't as easy to work with. Got it. Got it. That's it was much more interesting. Not dark and sinister, like just a business decision. The the business relationship wasn't working. Got it. So what's so? Here's a question: Why isn't he? Why isn't he singing like a canary? It's also possible that he's more than happy with this. Like they're just like, look, we'll pay you some cash, right? You you get to retire. We're gonna keep this going, right? It's it's possible he's happy with the arrangement as everybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, That's actually the dream, right? That's a great deal. Right. You can get it. But there's also, there's also an alternative theory uh, to that, but I'll get to it. Yes. Uh, so. This is, is the, a great one. I like it's this a, one. It's a real good. good. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this all kind of comes to a head in 2005. There's okay. a show in Elizabeth, New Jersey okay. that gets cut short. Sure. Because it's an Andrew W.K. concert. Mm-hmm. And the, it gets cut short because the crowd is going ballistic because... Whoever is up on that stage isn't w- Andrew W.K. Yeah, I love this. Who the fuck is this? Any, I'm going to say this. Any good conspiracy theory needs some kind of evidence like that. Yeah. Like a whole concert full of people <laughs> who are like, this is wrong. <laughs> this is way off. It's fucking. So a bunch of people are just like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> My, <laughs> There's two things. <laughs> two possible scenarios there that are each equally just wonderful. The first one is that the the conspirators are so dumb or <laughs> arrogant that they think that's like, well, just th- they're not going to know. Like, we'll just throw anyone right, up there. Right. Like, well, think about it. You think about, like, Andrew W.K. has this very specific look. He's got the long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, little bit of grizzled stubble, a uh, dirty white not yeah. a jumpsuit, but it's a dirty white shirt and dirty white pants. Uh-huh. He, the man is a it's a Halloween costume waiting to happen. Yes, yes, uh, speaking yes. as a huge Andrew WK fan, I enjoy yeah, him yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, I could see somebody just going, eh, "They'll be far enough away." <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll be just, moving around no, a lot. That's what I love. That's just that cold. Like, yeah. they're not gonna know. They, right. just, they, they like to the kids like to bop. Right. They like to, they like to party. Doesn't look like him. Doesn't sound like him. Or enough people are like, what the fuck is this? They just end the show. Boom, it's out. It's done. I was going to say that the other amazing scenario there is like, if it truly is Andrew WK. <laughs> right. <laughs> just nobody believes. Like, no, like, dear fans, it is I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's largely his take of like, what? No, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> it was me. Um. So, uh. Um, I don't know the exact timeline, but I believe within that same span of time, Andrew WK's official website is hacked Get and it's here. posted on. This has everything. There's a hacking involved. This has everything. There, there are postings on the Andrew WK website Oof. by somebody named Steve Mike. Basically, this is where this all kind of breaks through into pop culture. Yeah, are these yeah. Steve Mike things of like, this is a lie. This is all fake. No way. This is all bullshit. Get out of here. Are there screenshots of this? They, these exist. These wow. posts exist. Uh, I did not uh, read them extensively, but I've been talking about this right. for a long Maybe this is our white whale. <laughs> we get Tony Sparrow on the pod. We get him in on this. Boom. That's We're it. That's perfect. We're going to the top, baby. <laughs> We're going to crack this thing wide open. Look out, Steve, Steve Mike. <laughs> so Andrew WK then like posts a follow-up thing of like, hey, it was a hack. Don't believe any of this stuff you're hearing. Uh, it, you know, it's, people are just trying to make you doubt me. That's exactly don't, what don't you Don't believe it. I'm, I'm full in on this. This is not a conspiracy theory, Brian. This is a This crime. is just, I just brought <laughs> This is an ongoing, I'm afraid of ghosts. I'm not ashamed to say I'm afraid of ghosts and demons. I will go toe-to-toe with a shady mortal <laughs> record exec. If you can't curse me and you just make records, I'm going to take you down, my friend. So there is a, uh, a, all, oh, a select quote in the, uh, in Andrew WK's like explanation. Ah, the site got hacked. Uh, he says, I use that excuse once a day. They, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, WK writes, I used to go by, uh, Steve Mike a long time ago, but I don't anymore. Why would you say that? 
Why would you identify with the name of the hacker? Right? Right? Here's my fear. Here's my true fear as a as a dear fan of Andrew WK. <laughs> that he is somehow in duress <laughs> and in danger, held against his will. Just making the happiest music in the yeah, world. Yeah, just deep in the woods of Michigan, a prisoner <laughs> in a cabin. And Andrew, if you can hear this, we're coming for you, buddy. <laughs> Hold on. So... Uh, the other, like, prevailing, like, or the, it's possible either um, that Andrew WK was replaced in 2005. It's also possible that that actor was retired and now the original WK performer is now Andrew WK again. That's also kind of in the mix of the theory. Like, they swapped him out for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, but if you, it, it is, now these could, he looks different. From those eras. Right. So from the first album to the second album, the his vocals, they're different. They're different. It's the same sort of like pattern, speech pattern, but he sounds different. Uh, which could also have a lot to do with production value. Sure. Like there, there are things there. Uh, he also looks drastically different from the I Get Wet era. All, what happened? The wall. Um, it's just he, I, I don't know how to describe it. He looks different. And, like, you could rack it up to, I don't know, he got a haircut and a shave and he lost some weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, notable. He's kind, of an inter- no- he's kind of like a beefy dude. Right. Like, he looks like a dude who kind of, like, lifts weights but also just, like, eats a lot of pizza. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he's got kind <laughs> right, of, like, right. he's kind of like a sturdy yes, frame that's a great with a way lot to put of padding it. Yeah. on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Fucking, yeah, dog. Uh. Just not sure where that's at. This this is as far as everybody concerned. This is an sure. ongoing conspiracy. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, just to make it weirder, not in this could have this could have a lot of things. Andrew WK had a new single out uh, this year in January. Is it called Brian and Eric? Please rescue me from my Michigan prison cabin. If it was, we would get plane tickets and we would fucking yeah, we'd go be there right immediately. Now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's one of the early lyrics. In this single, is they say people can't change, but I'm living proof that they do. <laughs> okay. Is it a stretch? Yeah, but would it be a fun way to leave it on? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that one. As, <laughs> as my as my friend and my colleague and my co-host, I'm going to give you that one. <laughs> the whole thing is. Li- I think it's. Legit. It's a, the thing is. It's entirely fucking it's possible. So plausible. To right. Me. It's right. so plausible. Right. Uh, and, like, it is enough that... Oh, oh we got a quick thing from uh, from Alex here. Uh, one of my friends got beat up in a mosh pit at a Warp Tour 09 and got his nose banged up. He met Andrew WK later that day and had him sign the bloody bandage. And Andrew WK was like, hell yeah, I'll sign that, which is a total Andrew WK move. Yeah, very Andrew WK. Um, fuck, yeah. Wow. What it's, do you think? I... So I have a lot of opinions on it. Yeah. It, it, it's one of the few conspiracy theories that, that you can go like, yeah, fuck it. Buy that. Mm-hmm. I buy that. Mm-hmm. I have noticed independently before I knew it that he looks completely different. I have noticed that he sounded completely different. Right. Um, but, and, and if uh, largely uh, Dave Grohl is often associated with this. Is, let me ask you this, because there is a weird resemblance to Dave Grohl. Yeah. Like, they almost look like they could be related, yeah. or it could be Dave Grohl in makeup and, like, a bodysuit kind of situation. <laughs> right, sure. Is there is there any aspect of the theory that posits that Andrew WK is Dave Grohl, or that Dave Grohl started performing as Andrew WK, and then they got... Uh, no, that that has never uh, okay. been uh, an actual... I'd like to add that to the... Great. To the Great. Andrew WK conspiracy hey man, universe. What fun is a conspiracy if you can't just add to it spontaneously? Is there a subreddit for this? It's honestly, it's frequent enough on Andrew WK's actual subreddit. Got gotcha. you. Okay, <laughs> so it's part. Okay, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, but like that is also the kind of shit like Dave Grohl would think was funny. Yeah. How is what's the what's the Dave Grohl connection? It's uh, one of the very early, like, Andrew WK gigs was, like, opening for Foo Fighters. Got it, got so it. So it was, like, immediately kind of... And that does, like, very quickly explain, like, he was able to get very good records. Foo Fighters were one of the biggest fucking bands in the world at the goddamn time. Yeah, right, right, right. 
it. Uh, still are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so like that would very quickly yeah, like, hey, we, like, we got a project. Like red hot chili peppers, kind right? Of ish level, right? Not maybe exactly. Um, I would say the Foo Fighters are bigger than the red hot chili peppers. You think so? I would say so. Interesting. Motherfucker was in Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, fair, true. Uh, but like, boom, you could really quickly put out a high budget like joke. Um. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's fun and plausible, but also I don't really buy I so don't know is, if I buy it, but so it's fucking is weird. kind of like an Andy Kaufman yeah. kind of situation. Yeah, but on, like, a corporate level. Yeah. Uh, like, Andrew WK is a brand. Because, like, also right. you have a lot to sell in, like, a pop fun metal show. Yeah. And here's, here's our fun, enjoyable clown man. Yeah. Yeah, I'd buy any merchy. He wants to see yeah. me, pretty much. Yeah. Even though, you know what? Even if it's not one guy, it doesn't bother me. No, I would still, I would still be on board with it. I'm totally cool with it. Yeah. Uh, this is you, it, corporate America. You got me on this one. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, like that's why it's actually a fun conspiracy of like it's not hurting anybody. No. <laughs> and, like, no. And in fact, I enjoy it quite a bit. It's like an alternate reality game, but with music and partying. Now here, but here's here's a good counter question. Uh, Andrew WK has largely moved away from music. It feels like he's largely yeah. like he does like he owns a club here in the city. Um, he uh, he does a lot of like motivational speaking yeah. uh, and like hosts children shows. Is it? Do you kind of give up the game at this point? That's actually, I'd say that is the most deflating. That turn of events is the most deflating aspect of the whole thing. Because why would you, right, right. and which of the guys is going to be like, all right, I'll be a motivational speaker. And, you know, it's just totally, right. it's right. Like clearly a man engaging in like private entrepreneurial enterprise. You know? <laughs> right. it's like he, yeah, he owns a small pizza shop in like, South Brooklyn. It's like, what? Right. Is it still the same <laughs> team? Right, right. right. <laughs> Involved? That's crazy. Andrew WK. This is an excellent one. It's pretty good. It's... I, I wish you never told me that last part. <laughs> I mean, maybe let's save it. Maybe one of the guy, one of the Andrew WK actors, just felt really inspired and inspirational and wanted to just keep running with it. I like it. I like running it. Running with the character, yeah. and know? it was like. And keep in mind, he still. Yeah, yeah. Alex says in the chat, uh, he was on tour this year. He still does do music. He had a single out this year, but like, yeah. it's been less his primary the wave focus. Has passed. I mean, right, I remember right. when I was in college, it was like he was everywhere. Right. Right. It's like definitely like going into if adults right now wanted to go to an Andrew WK show, that'd be something their kids would roll their eyes at, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, true. He's still fun. Dude, he fucking rules and he's a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. What was he like on the Gathered Show? He just came. It was on. a blast. And this was like early, early Gathered Show, like public access. Just, yeah, he was there. He was totally game. And it wasn't a good episode. But he had a blast. Yeah. He seemed to have a blast was on it. Was he in the show as well, or was he just pure musical guest? No, he was. He was the guy. He actually didn't perform. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, yeah. He was just there to party. That's great. It was fun. I was re- look it up. It's fun. I like how he usually bleeds a little bit. Uh, that's the other like rumor uh, is that uh, so the cover of I Get Wet is just his bleeding face. Yeah. Uh, it was initially or the rumor, the story, the urban legend is that. He, uh, they couldn't get the fake blood to look how they wanted it to. They couldn't get it to look real enough. So Andy, so he just took a brick and smashed his face with it and sure. actually like broke his nose. Great. <laughs> Sounds about right. But it's called commitment. Hell yeah. It's called commitment. Wow. That's crazy. Let's smash our faces for this podcast. Sure. I'm doing it now. Ow. Oh no. Ow. Oh, Eric, you're bleeding everywhere. Oh, so are you, Brian. It's uh, very authentic. So, oh man, there's, there's so much blood everywhere. We we should uh we should probably get out of here, huh? <laughs> Imagine next episode was just literally it's just like clearly not us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, hello, I am Brian, and hi, I'm his responsible co-host, Eric. <laughs> We're yeah. here to talk about uh scary stories. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the move. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. I think that's it, man. Uh, we're actually, I, I, I didn't know how much I wanted to say, but we're actually recording next week uh, now, yeah. or about to. Sure. I'm going to take a pee-pee break, and then we're just going to literally do next week. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so we should just go grab two random people and like put, throw them in the chair. <laughs> yeah, see how they do. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll take off. <laughs> Maybe we're the problem. That's, that entirely 
checks out. Guys, we're Brian and Eric. Don't belong here. We are uh, live every Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. We have a chat room. We sometimes open up the phone lines. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but you can find us afterwards on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts or your uh, podcast app of choice. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Brian and Eric Pod. Uh, I think I think that's it. Uh, our music, our, our spooky background music, is from purple-planet.com, and our intro and outro themes are by Morris Black, who you can find on Spotify. He's great. Very good. Uh, any, anything else? Anything else we should go over? Should we get out of here? I'm just gonna say, stay safe. Keep searching. Andrew WK, reach out to us if you need anything, buddy. Yeah, if you need help, just tap two times, dude. We'll 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 come. We'll, be we'll there. come for you. I'm gonna rent a seaplane. <laughs>